Well, it's a beautiful day today, and I hope everybody had a nice day today and, and got, got an announced or whatever. Um, Kenneth, you want to open with prayer? What? AD just told me there was a bad wreck up here on 59. Got a tractor backed up way up with a truck and a, a, a van. I didn't know the details of it. Man. Did y'all hear that? He's telling about a bad wreck up the road here. So okay. Be sure to include him in the prayer. What is? Yeah, in the prayer. There's a bad wreck, baby. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being able to be here today, Lord. And Lord, we want to ask you to take care of the people that are in that bad wreck up the road. Amen. We don't know what the situation is, Lord, but we know you've got your hand on all of them, Lord. And we ask you to uh, take care of them and make them all <clears throat> well again, Lord, because you know there's somebody going to get hurt in when there's a, a really bad wreck like this, Lord. So we would also like, Lord, for you to take care of all the people that's on the prayer list, too, Lord. This is people, Lord, that we need to be taken care of it because <clears throat> they are hopefully going to be people that uh, will worship you, Lord. Amen. All we want to do, Lord, is to further your kingdom with everything we do, Lord. We just want to thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Amen. 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 Thank you, bro. You know, Brother Gary had preached a lot of times that we need to have a national a revival. There was a time way back that uh, some, they were talking about the only thing that would save the world was a revival in <coughs> the country. The first week, there were 12 people showed up. The second week, there were 24 people showed up. The third week, there's 30,000 showed up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so word traveled, but that's really what it takes to save this country. Brother, something we don't talk about on that, and I hate to interrupt, but I believe we're going to have to go back to prayer and fasting. Amen. The Bible leans on fasting quite a bit, especially special problems and the, and the situation the world's in today. We need to give it a strong consideration. Like that Pharisee in our Sunday school this morning said, I, I fast twice a week and I pray daily and all that stuff, but that was his lifting himself up not for any reason other than to bring but i'm telling you that i believe that's what's going to take to get revival to get this nation stirred up this world stirred up is people fasting and praying won't it yeah but you know uh i think the american people the majority of american people would welcome a national revival it's just got somebody's got to get it going that's right Anybody got a song? Let's start with a song. I do. What? 269. 269. 269. Read a thread book. In the red book. Okay. <coughs> Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That's a good song. Amen.
good song. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I got a little man. Go ahead and see y'all. Any uh, testimonies this evening? Any hallelujahs? Any? I'll say praise the Lord just because I love him and because he loves me and he takes care of us so <coughs> well and loves us in such gentle ways sometimes. This morning, uh, Mr. Billy was Woods was talking about needing a was was he needing a washer also? No, he just a dryer. Just a dryer. Okay, well he's got the dryer, so that's that's a good thing. Yeah. And it will have to be his was set up for a side ventilation. And that's what that, And the dryer that we took over had a side ventilation. Uh, <laughs> Praise the Lord! Everything <laughs> fell in place perfectly. Yeah. Thank the Lord for it. Any other testimonies? I don't know if that was a testimony, but any testimonies? Yes. Well, you didn't get a blessing out of being here today for the Sunday school lesson and for the Amen. Uh, brother the sermon we had. Talk about it. I guarantee you, you, you need to sit down and think about your situation. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Jerry, I thank you all for helping me today. I thank you. For other brothers and sisters in this church, they're good people willing to help you. I mean, they just don't hesitate to you know, like pour their heart out for you and, and uh, love on each other. I thank you for that. It blessed me today just to spend time with y'all doing that and church. And uh, <coughs> we're kind of thin tonight. And we are sometimes on Wednesday. We talk about numbers sometimes and about people you can't get to church and we don't know the problem sometimes why you know but man they're missing out Amen. I mean, they are. you know they're missing out and, and for no other reason I'd like to see them here just so they can enter in and you know whatever the old enemy has got lying to them about maybe what their expectation may be at church or whatever <coughs> it is uh, you know I just feel like there's a freedom here that they don't have to worry about that. Just come and enter in and just receive the word, the friendship, and, and the love that this church has. And boy, it, it, it should be full. It's got every potential to be full. And uh, it's my prayer to, for each one of us to draw them, you know. My brother told me one time, he says, if you go to Sunday morning church, you love the pastor. If you go to Sunday morning and Sunday evening, you love the church. If you go Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday, you love the Lord. Amen. 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 Might, might be some truth to that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Some people just come to church on Christmas and Easter. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Mother's Day. You know, but, but, uh, yeah. we do need... <laughs> A revival. Anybody got a song in one? Number 19. What? Number 19. One nine. One on nine? One nine. 19? Yeah. Yes. No, 19. <laughs> <I'm> 19. <laughs> <laughs> 91 backwards. Thank you. That's a closer walk with me. Another good song. Ah, that was a good song. All of these songs are good, good songs. Though. Some of them I even know. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. 
throat. It's different. 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 It's
something that we get to offer to him that we get to sacrifice to him for his honor because it's something that's precious to us amen we got so much things to be doing and when you 
when you drop what you know you need to be doing to what what take precedent, and when the Lord you give the Lord precedent over those things you you think you need to be doing, he, he, he it's an expression of love that he appreciates from us. Amen. Amen. And so thank you for being here. <clears throat> I got some scriptures I want us to look at. I got about four scriptures I want us to read. Uh, I get some scripture readers tonight. Vicky just jumped right on up there, didn't you? Uh, Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28. Melissa, you do Romans uh, chapter 3, verses 23 through 26. I got two more. Who wants one? I'm going to bash on that, are you? Jim and uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, 6 through 12 and 80. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. That's all I got. So thank y'all for doing that. You know, this morning we talked about the highway uh, of holiness and and that highway is the, we know is the straight and narrow way. We know Christ is the way onto that highway. The way to stay on that highway and uh, it leads to a good place that he's prepared for us. And, uh, and I thank God that, uh, that he is there even now uh, preparing that place for us. It's going to be a place, place like like the like you've never seen. I, I think that there's no way you can imagine what awaits us over there. I think it's going to be beyond our wildest dreams, our greatest <coughs> expectations. I think you could take the greatest expectation about what you think heaven's going to be like that and multiply it by, you know, they use the words, the number of trillions now by trillions and you still wouldn't come close to what you're really going to find when you get there. That's just my opinion on it. I believe that with all my heart. And uh, you, we like this place so much. This place is like a dark compared to what's going to be there. And so uh, praise God for that. <clears throat> but we also found out that in order for you to be on that highway of righteousness, there's a thing that we have to all have. None of us can get on that highway without this. This is our permit to get on this road to, to glory. It's called redemption. And, uh, and our redemption is something that we need to cherish. Our redemption is something we need to be absolutely 100% sure of because it's going to be a sad day when, when people get stand before him and they realize they have not been redeemed. Amen. By, by by Jesus Christ. It's going to be a sad day. And he knows, you know, uh, there's not very many of us that buy something and don't know it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> not very many of us. Now, I've heard of people being at auction and rubbing their nose and <laughs> bought something accidentally, but, you know, we're, we're not auctioned off to Christ. Christ bought each one of us purposefully. Amen. And he knows who's his. He knows who's not his. He knows who just claims to be, and he knows who really is. And he, you're not going to fool him ever, ever, ever. So it, it's a it's a ridiculous idea to wonder and to think that someone would even try to say I'm redeemed when they're not. And it's only to make themselves look good or feel good here. <clears throat> but it's something we need to be absolutely uh, certain of. One of the things I want to look at is is uh, our redeemer. And to know that he's coming. We talk about this all the time. That Jesus Christ is coming back. How many of you believe that? Yeah. He, he is coming back. <clears throat> and, you know, I'm a believer that uh, that uh, that he, he's going to come back uh, uh, more than once. Now, I don't mean to, I don't want to confuse y'all, but I believe that the, that the rapture, that some people don't even believe in, that, uh, the Lord's going to come back. I don't think he's going to even touch his feet on this earth. I think we're going to meet him in the air. I think the Bible's plain about that. There's going to be a thing called the rapture where he comes from the east and, and he comes across like a bolt of lightning. It's going to happen so quick. Uh, and we're going to need to have the Holy Ghost if we don't because it quickens our mortal bodies. Amen. And, and you ain't going to be Superman without that. And so uh, you're not going to meet him in the air without that either. So uh, we, we know that, but there's also going to come a time when he does come back here, amen? And he is going to, he is going to set his feet on this, this world again. And when he does, let me tell you what he's going to be. He's going to be king. 
Amen. 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 He can be the king. And those who are redeemed, listen to me, going to be with you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to come back <coughs> before it's over with. We're going to be with you. Uh, but uh, the scripture in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28, Vicki, if you go ahead and read that for us, please. <coughs> And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. <coughs> and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a great in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. This is a, a scripture that is told to us in the, in the book of Luke here, and it's talking about the things that we're going to see before the Lord does come back. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a thing that, that, that's going to happen. Uh, one of the things that's going to happen, you're going to see persecution. It's going to come greatly. Uh, you, I think we see the beginning of it uh, here in our nation now, the persecution that comes, the the uh, the attitude toward the church, the attitude toward God's people that, you know, used to, Christian people were considered the, the salt of the earth, the good people of the earth, the ones people could always depend on to be generous, to be kind, to give. Now we're being looked at as as uh, bigots, we're being looked at as as people who stand in the way of, of progress. That we are the ones who hate other people. Uh, that we're the ones who who uh, uh, are judgmental. That we don't don't agree with everybody's lifestyle that they want to do. And the world says that stuff is okay. So we become the bad people. That's persecution, by the way. It's going to get worse here. And I think you're going to see before it's over with, if things don't change drastically, when you have a morphodact running government business on the level that this thing is, you see these things coming past and how easily that a person that, that's in a power, an office of power, can regulate things to make, to make us Illegal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Look at it. I mean, just, just look at what's going on. You ain't got to watch the news every day. You, you can just look at it every once in a while and think, oh my. I, you, just when you think it can't get any worse, it does. It does. And it's going to get worse than that, I'm afraid. And, and I'm not uh, a prophet. I don't know that. I just know from the scripture that I don't think it's going to uh, get any better. There's going to be desolation that comes. And, and you know, you look at all these things and you say, well, this stuff has got to happen before Christ comes back. Well, according to this scripture right here, we're going to see great distress. Uh, there's going to be signs of the sun, the moon, and the stars. You've never seen a more focus on that part of the world, the, the universe, as you do now, the sun, the moon, the stars. That's what global warming is all about. That's what uh, you, 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 <laughs> aliens, space crafts, and, and you see more of that stuff than you've ever seen in your life. And and and, and so the, if the people are watching the skies, they're watching the stars, they're watching the sun, they're watching the moon, they're watching the ocean waves, they're watching the level of the water, they're watching the icebergs, they're watching all these things, people to distress. Now there's people who are more distressed over these things than you think they are. Mm -hmm. Amen? And and so, uh, you know, how many of y'all remember tree huggers? Y'all remember tree huggers? Back uh, when I was young, the young people today don't know what a tree hugger is. <coughs> they, got it, they decided that we were destroying the atmosphere and the oxygen levels because we were cutting trees. And I was a logger at this time, so I kind of laughed at this, but uh, people in certain areas of the country, especially California, would go chain themselves to trees in the woods to keep people from cutting them down. Well, Y'all remember the solution to that? Don't use paper, use plastic. Well, now the ocean's full of plastics. 
Now there's a move because us sorry conservatives, they forgot the tree huggers caused all of that. So so the, the conservatives, the people that we used to cut down the trees now have polluted the world with plastic. And so it's it's a it's a it's a it's it's a mindset of a lost people who refuse to accept a responsibility for anything they've done. It's always somebody else's fault. Yep. And that's what we see in this scripture right here. When we see the distress of the nations with perplexity, it says. And it's talking about in the sea and the waves roaring. Amen. <laughs> You know, the first time me and Anita went to Hawaii, and they're they're a, they're a big eco people. They don't even want you walking on their mountain because they don't want you to upset the ecosystem. And you know what the first thing I saw hanging in a palm tree was? A Walmart, a Walmart sack. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Paper's biodegradable. Trees are renewable resources. God made them that way just for us to use. And yet we've replaced it with something that won't degrade, that won't uh, uh, go back into the soil, something that's there forever once it gets there. You may not see it anymore, but it's going to still be there. Amen? And so that we've got these things, that this perplexity, and it says then that men's hearts failing from the, for fear. Our scripture this morning in Isaiah started off in that verse 4 telling us not to be afraid. Not to be afraid of these things. Yeah. Not to fear. But the Bible says here that men's hearts are going to fail them for fear. I have never heard of so many young men and women dying in all of my life. From heart attacks, from stress, from depression. It's a fear and an anxiety that's in our nation today that's affecting every generation, not just older people, but younger people too. And suicide. And suicide. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, yeah. it's rampant in this country. And, and, and you've never seen so much of it before. And it may be because we have so much access to information, but I don't think, I think it's an increase in all that. And so it says the, the men's hearts are failing for, uh, for fear. And looking after those things which are coming on the earth, that that sound familiar? We got to we got to stop all this stuff because look what's coming down the pipe. New York's gonna be under ten feet of water before it's over with. All the coastline's gone. All you know, think about it. What's coming? Well, you know, there's there's always been glaciers and they've melted. And I've said this to y'all before. Somebody walked across from one continent to another on dry land at one time yeah. before there was ever a factory or a smokestack or a cow, I mean a, a car. Yeah. There was always cows, and I guess the gas that they emit causes a lot of it. Well, that's what we're hearing now. <laughs> but those that dry land that those people walked across one time, guess what happened to the access points? They got covered up with water. I wonder how that happened. It just must have rained a lot, huh? Either that or those ice caps have always been melting. Now think about this, but but see, they want you to believe that it's all our fault. It's everybody else's fault. It's 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 business fault, it's corporations fault, it's factories fault, it's automobiles fault, it's cows fault, it's everybody's fault. It can't nothing be caused by God. It can't nothing be natural. It's always somebody else's fault, and we won't worry about it. And so this is what we see here, and it says, uh, uh, it says that the, this is uh, this people are worrying about the things that are coming, the perplexity about the things that are coming on the earth, and for the powers of heaven is going to be shaken. It says, and then look, and it says, and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now look at this next verse. I want you to pay attention to this. It says, and when these things begin, amen, it don't mean after these things have come already. It don't mean after the great persecution. It don't mean after Jerusalem is surrounded by nations. It don't mean that it says when it begins. 
Everything has a beginning, and it don't look so bad at the first. Even the great tribulation is not going to look so bad at the first. Amen? But after three and a half years, it's going to get raunchy. It's going to get raunchier and raunchier until the end of it. Amen? So he says that this is going to happen, and at the very beginning of this, and when these things begin to come to pass, not after they've already come to pass, but after when they begin, lift up your heads. Why? Why do you lift up your heads? What are you looking for? Our Redeemer. Your redemption. He said, don't even say your Redeemer. Your redemption. Draw nigh. Draw nigh. You know what that means? It's the completion of your salvation in Jesus Christ. Exactly. When he comes back, your redemption is complete because he's coming to get you. And that's the end of our salvation here and the beginning of our eternal life. Think about it. I tell you all the time, there's a process. We live, our salvation is a process. Our redemption is a process. Our, we are redeemed, but there's a process until our final redemption. Until the bill is paid in full and called in. Amen. When he comes back, our redemption is going to come. He's going, we're going to see him. He's going to get us. And it's all paid in full right now. Amen. It's complete right now. I want to be there, don't you? Amen. I want to be looking at him. I want to be watching for him. I want to see him. I want to leave with him. And I want to come back with him, don't you? That's our redemption. That's what we get if we live on the highway to heaven, the highway of holiness, this journey we're on. That's why he says it's a highway. What are you doing on a highway? You travel. You go from one destination to another destination. The Lord's telling us right now, you're on earth. Your destination is not to stay there. Your destination is to go to another location. And I'm going to put you on the highway. You're going to enter in through me. I'm going to be your way. Amen. I'm going to buy you gasoline. I'm going to furnish your transportation. I'm going to furnish your meals. I'm going to furnish everything you need to make this journey on this highway. And when you got there, you ain't going to get there. You ain't going to have nobody to thank but one, one, and that's Christ. You're there solely because of him, because you believed on him. That's our righteousness. That's how we become righteous. It's because he's righteous. And so he says, when you get to this point, that it's the beginning of all this stuff, and that's why I keep saying, the Lord, if you come at any time now, because I think we're seeing the beginning of all this stuff. Amen. I think we're seeing the very start of all of it right now. That's going to lead to a bad, bad place. Amen. We have it. We're seeing the fulfillment already of what Isaiah prophesied. That men are going to call evil good and, and, uh, and, and good going to be evil. We're already seeing that fulfillment. It's already been done before our eyes. And so we need to remember this. We need to keep our eyes focused on him coming. And we need to keep our hearts focused on the kingdom work of God. And don't be distracted by what this world's doing. Because it ain't, a, it ain't in a happy place. I don't care what they take. They're not in a happy place. They're in a bad place. And only those people who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ in the place they need to be. So we need to stay there. Now the next thing we want to look at, Melissa, you've got Romans chapter 3, very familiar scripture right here. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 26. For all have sinned and short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace and the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And God had set forth to be a propitiation for faith in his blood to declare his righteousness from the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Okay, so we, we, I, wanted, I backed up actually and added this uh, verse 23. I want you to know we all have sinned. 
we are all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. And so, uh, but he says, uh, when he says this, he said, we're being judged freely. How? By his grace. Through what? We're saved by grace through faith. But we're judged. <coughs> look at this. We're judged by grace through the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. And I tell, I've, I've used this, this imagery before, that when God sees a man, he sees a sinner. But when he sees a man through Christ, he sees a redeemed person. He sees someone who, who's covered. He sees someone who's been ransomed. He sees someone whose debt has been paid because of a sacrifice that the Lamb of God made for him. <coughs> a person that hadn't been redeemed by Christ, when they stand before the Father, he sees the sinner, the lost. And if he's not seeing them through Jesus, he's not seeing a redeemed person. Amen? How important is your redemption now? So, yeah, the utmost. More important than anything in the world. There's nothing more important than that. And so he says, uh, you, he, he, you're justified freely by the, the grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now look at this. Whom God the Father has set to be a propitiation, a substitute <coughs> through faith. Through faith in what? How do we apply the substitutionary power of God into our lives? Look at what it says in his blood it's applied by his blood and it says it's applied by his blood and when you apply the blood to your life of Christ the propitiation through faith in, in his blood you are declared look at this his righteousness not your own your own righteousness when God looks at you and you don't have Christ between you and him he sees your righteousness. What does that look like to God? Filthy, stinking rags. But when he looks at you through Christ, guess what he sees then? <coughs> he sees righteousness in his son. He sees redemption in his son. He sees a clean person, a holy person, because he sees his son instead of that person. He is our substitute. That's what our propitiation means. And then it says he, he, he makes us righteous. How? For the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So everything from the moment of your redemption behind you is gone. Not remembered anymore. Cast away from you, according to the Psalms as far as east is from the west. But now we have, through our redemption, now we have access because we are redeemed, this is this is the time when we can come boldly before God. And so we're able to bring our present sin boldly before God, requesting his forgiveness, and expressing our desire to have the blood of Christ cover that sin. Does he do it? Absolutely does. Absolutely does. It's done according to his will. Your sin is not according to his will, but your request for forgiveness is supported because of his will. He did that for us. Why? So we can go to heaven. If it weren't for that, we couldn't go. Amen? And so he says, and, and he forbears us, but it says through the forbearance of God, God's patient with us. The, the Bible says that he is long-suffering toward us, Amen? Why? Because his son died for us. In other words, he puts up with us because of Jesus. That's what forbearance means. Donna puts up with Troy because she married him. <laughs> Amen? We're married to Christ. And the father puts up with, you know, let me use this a different analogy. Donna's mother puts up with Troy because Donna's married to him. 
And the Father puts up with us because we're married to Jesus. He forbears. Amen. And then he says, to declare, I say this time, his righteousness, that he, he might be just. Now look at this. And the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus Christ. Did you see that? Because God declared Jesus just. He allows him to justify us because we believe in him. Amen? That's what it says. It says uh, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? We're no longer guilty. We're no longer guilty because we're justified. You're not, you can't justify your sin. <coughs> But you are justified in Christ. Amen? We've been more than grand here. We've been acquitted. That's right. That's right. Amen. And, and it mentions the remission of sins here. The sins have to be remitted. It says past sins through the forbearance of God. It also has to be a, an admission of present sin and a confession and a boldness before God and a covering of the blood to cleanse you again. How often can that happen? As many times as you need it to. That's the mercy of God that endures forever. That's the mercy of God that is from everlasting to everlasting. The, the forbearance of God and allowing the application of the blood of Jesus on our life over and over and over and over and over and I can just say over all day and all night and I can still be saying over that it's allowed by God because he's a justifier of us. Amen. You don't think we need Jesus? You don't no, think this no. world needs Jesus? No. Amen. Amen. The best person among us needs Jesus more than even know. Oh, yes. We need him. Without him, we don't have anything. And we're not going to get anything. Okay, so we have our Redeemer's coming. We have our redemption in Christ, who is our justifier, because he has given us his righteousness. Now, let's look at what it means to, to go through his blood. Uh, Jim, you've got Ephesians chapter 1, verses 6 through 12. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed to him in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Amen. <laughs> Boy, that's beautiful, isn't it? And I want you to look at this. I want you to look at, at verse 6, what he said. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Now look at this. Wherein he hath made us accepted you see that yeah. where in the beloved what is the beloved it's the glory of God it's heaven it's where God dwells it's the beloved place it's the place we all want to go it's the place we all want to be he said I, I, you are accepted in this place you are accepted by the father and we have and we're accepted because we have redemption through his blood we're accepted because of the forgiveness of our sins according to what? His riches of grace. How much grace does he got? Is his grace sufficient? Amen. Always. Always sufficient. Amen. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, 
having made known unto us the mystery of his will. How's he done that? By filling us with the Spirit and revealing to us what Christ has said. What Christ has said we should do, what Christ has said he will do, what Christ has said is coming, and how we're supposed to be pre prepared for that. It's all there. And so we, he, has, he has shown us and made known to us the mystery of his will according to what? His good pleasure. That means he'll show it to you as you need it or as you deserve it. Amen? Is there hindrances to him showing you things? You better believe it. <laughs> Amen. So we need to remove those hindrances. How do you do that? By forgiveness through the blood. And staying in the will of the Father. By being forgiven. Amen. It, it, it's simple, but it's difficult for us, isn't it? Because we've got to admit we're wrong. <coughs> and we've got to be humble a lot to allow this to happen in our lives. And then we've got to study. We've got to know what, what we need to know. And it says he uh, uh, he does it according to his good pleasure, pr pleasure, which he purposed in himself. And then he talks about the dispensation of the fullness of time that he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Now, he wants us all to come together in one place in Christ Jesus. And you're not coming to that place apart from Jesus Christ. It's all about him. All the fullness of the Godhead is in him. Everything's been given to him. All judgment's been given to him. All power has been given to him in heaven and earth, uh, both, both which are in heaven and, and, and are on earth, even in him. Now, I want you to look at this. And it says, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. So in him, through his righteousness, through his redemption, by forgiveness of our sins, under his blood, we have an inheritance now. Now, what can keep us, is there anything that can keep us from getting that inheritance? Once you have become a beneficiary of the inheritance of Jesus Christ. Now, how do you get that? Jesus said that we become joint heirs with him. How do we do that? By becoming the sons of God. Amen? By becoming the sons and the daughters of God, we have become a child of God as Jesus identified himself as the son of God. Now he is the oldest son. He is the son with priority. He's the son that everything else is left to. But the other children get to live there too. With him. Amen. And we're beneficiaries because of Jesus Christ is the son of God. As sons ourselves. Amen. And then that uses this word predestinated. And we, boy, we get, boy, you get still old and all strangled and tumbled up on this. You know what that means? Listen to me. I'll tell you what it means. It's easy. Predestination is when you know Jesus Christ, you are predestined to go somewhere. And that's heaven. That is the predestination of God. Without Jesus, you are predestined to go another place. And it ain't heaven. So predestination doesn't work. A lot of people say, well, that means God knows already knows who's going to heaven. That ain't got nothing to do with that. But what it does mean is those who believe Jesus Christ and have received him and been saved by him, been redeemed by him, are predestined to go somewhere. Amen. But, you know, when you read Ephesians chapter 1, <coughs> carefully through all that, he's really saying that when you're, when you're purchased by the blood and you're saved, you become a new creature. Mm -hmm. As a result, you are you are predestined to receive, kind of like these signs shall follow them that believe. Those attributes, characteristics, promises, and where you're going to end up as a result okay. of you being saved. And oh, that's yes. already in place mm -hmm. for you to receive it once you get there. there you if you're not saved. These things don't apply to you. Do not that's apply. A, that's exactly what it's saying there. That's right. That's exactly what we just said. Mm -hmm. It don't apply if you're lost. It only applies if you've received Christ. If you believe on Christ mm -hmm. and are saved, you are predestined. You are predetermined. Your place is going to be there. <laughs> Amen. Now, it's like a lot of things. A lot of people try to say, well, that can all be taken away. I've never seen it in Scripture where it can be. 
It's just like you and your children. How many of you would destroy your child on purpose? No matter what they did. And so this is the predestination that has given to us because of our relationship with his son. And he and then he goes on in verse 12 that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Amen. It's, it's a beautiful thing that this that, that we are allowed to, to, to know Christ and are predetermined where we will go because of our salvation in Jesus Christ. Lost men don't have that. Amen. Now, let's look at the last one. Now, there, there's a reason why I can say we're predetermined when we're saved. And there's something that happens when we're saved. When we're saved, we receive something. Somebody tell me what we receive in our salvation. We receive the promise. We receive the spirit of promise. We receive the Holy Ghost, don't we? You receive the Holy Spirit. And I, I'm amazed at how many people don't realize the importance of the Holy Spirit and have been taught. I know me and Troy talked about this at length. How many people have not been taught and heard preached the importance of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit, a lot of churches just refer to the third part of the Trinity of God. It never shows the importance, and John shows us the importance. But in Ephesians, we give the real importance. He gives us the real exact importance of what the Holy Ghost does for us. Amen? So, uh, uh, A.D., you got that uh, 4 and 30 in uh, Ephesians. Would you read that for me, please? Right. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, before he reads the next uh, verses that you give it, those next two verses that you didn't read, that goes along with 13, 13 and 14, that tells you about receiving the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our seal. That's all this year is going to happen, take place, like what you said already. Mm -hmm. And talk, you're talking about verses 13 and 14 of that same verse? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead and read that for us. Well, verse 12 says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. And the next verse tells us how can we trust in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. Okay. So like what you're saying, after we're saved, we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit seals us, and that determines everything that you that That's you right. and Todd have said. It's, it's going to happen. That's right. It, it, it's happening. And, and I'm glad you brought that uh, to our attention. I knew it was there. Uh, go ahead, A.D. You're going to read this because he mentioned, <clears throat> this ain't the first time in Ephesians, Paul mentioned how we're sealed. Four and thirty, please. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. When you believe, that's the reason I always couple receive with believe, because when you believe on Jesus Christ, and, and our explanation, and it, and it don't change the meaning, but our explanation is Christ lives in me. Well, how does He live in you? The Holy Ghost lives in you. You have received the spirit of truth. You received the spirit, the comforter that was that Jesus said he will be in you and we have received the Holy Spirit in us. Now when we receive the Holy Spirit, it, the Holy Spirit comes with a lot of gifts to give us. Amen? He gives us truth. He gives us understanding. He gives us knowledge. He gives us an understanding of what Jesus requires of us. He knows the will of the Father. Why? Because he is the Father. He knows everything that God wants us to do and is willing to show us. But that's not all he does for us. He does one more thing. He seals us. That's why you can say from the moment of your <coughs> salvation, you are predetermined to go to heaven. Because at the moment of your salvation, you receive by your belief in Christ the Holy Spirit of God. And the Bible says twice just in Ephesians that the Holy Spirit seals us for how long? A.D. read it. 
until the day of redemption. You are sealed. You are guaranteed. You are redeemed. You are ransomed. Your debt has been paid. The Holy Spirit certifies this and there ain't nothing in earth that can change that destination that you have as long as you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of people teach that that seal can be broken. Let me ask you a question. <coughs> Who's going to break the seal God has placed on you? <laughs> Who is going to override his will? He tells us that not one can pluck you out of the power. That's what he said. No one can pluck you out of my Father's hand. Well, what keeps you there? The Holy Spirit has sealed you and placed you right there. We serve a great God. Praise the Lord. You know, brother, Amen. the Holy Spirit is the one that's talking to you when, you, when you're doing something wrong. He tells you you're doing it wrong, and it's God speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's just what the Spirit speaks to our hearts, speaks to us, where we can understand you. Amen. I love God. We serve such a great God. I hope your understanding of God has been increased tonight. I hope your understanding of what redemption is has been has been elevated tonight. That you understand more about what it means to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That you understand more and more how much we owe Christ. Sometimes I get to feel we don't realize what we really owe Christ and what Christ has really done for us. Mm -hmm. And we see it in our Old Testament study, all of those sacrifices, all of those animals that died, all of those rituals that went through, every bit of that was satisfied by him. Him and him alone. He's great. You can't, we can't praise him enough, and we need to praise him more. Amen. We need to honor him more by telling people what our testimony is, to tell them how great he is and how we know we can go to heaven. Amen. Through these scriptures tonight, I hope y'all wrote these down, and somebody asked you, how do you know you're going to make it to heaven? Well, let me read you Ephesians chapter 1, verses 6 through. Keep me out of heaven. Amen. Not to argue, but to show. When the question's asked, I feel the Spirit and I see it. And I predetermined because of my belief in Christ that I'm going to go to heaven. According to God's word. What do you stand? Oh, no, it ain't bragging. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just pray tonight that if we have this short time of invitation that that you make sure in your mind that you know without a doubt that you're redeemed. It'd be a sad thing to go your whole life thinking you were when you weren't. So let's use this moment as a time of reflection. Bow your head, please, close your eyes, and use this time just to make sure in your own heart as you stand there that you know who your Redeemer is. That you know, I like what the scripture says. I know my Redeemer liveth. Amen. He does. He's alive and he's alive forevermore. You can't kill God, <laughs> you can't change God. God can change men you. Aren't you glad? He can forgive anything we do. No sin too great that his grace can't cover. There's no sin so powerful that the blood can't wash it white as snow. There's only one. It's when you reject him. When you try to go to heaven some other way, that can't be forgiven. <coughs> All in him.
Thank y'all so much for being here tonight. I just pray that the uh, Lord has enlightened you today and tonight. And y'all, we're going to get to heaven one of these days. And you're going to be so glad you're there. <laughs> it's going to be so good there. I can't wait to get there. Can you? And you know what? A lot of people say, well, you have to die to get there. I don't care anymore. I'm ready. Aren't you? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Uh, don't forget our announcements. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night service comes, 6 o'clock. Uh, we, we'll be in Leviticus somewhere around in Leviticus somewhere. Oh, anybody remember what chapter? 10? 10. 10. 10. Yeah, when Troy tried to get us to get into 10 last week, I wouldn't let him, wouldn't let him drag me into that. I tried more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God bless you all. We love you. And we appreciate you. Brother A.D., would you dismiss us, please? Yes, sir. Lord God of glory, once again, we are extremely appreciative that you have given us what you have given us, the truth that we know. Thank you, Almighty God, that we know your spirit, that we know the truth of your word, Lord. Help us, O oh God, to walk one step at a time to seek to get closer to you. The problems of this world, Lord, should be prayed for but not worried about because it's in your hands. We know who controls this earth and who controls as great as he does. All things will be done with the will of God and there's nothing man can do about it. Thank you, Almighty God, for the people that are here, for those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Lord, help us, O oh God, to spend every waking moment with praise <coughs> on our lips. Every day that we raise up in the morning, Lord, that it might be on said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God, for giving me another day. As we go to bed tonight, Lord, help us, oh God, to remember to thank you for yet another day. That we have witnessed your glory, we have heard your truth, and we have been told what we must do to be saved. Thank you, Almighty God, for the plan that you've given us Help us, Lord, to cling to it as we never cling to any prizes that we've ever had, Lord. Keep your hand on us, guide us, direct us, keep us safe from harm and injury. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.